Breaking news, the Colts ruling out Jonathan Taylor for tomorrow's game against the Broncos. He injured his ankle Sunday against the Titans. It'll be the first missed game due to injury of Taylor's career. So hurts the ankle and it's a short week, so cannot get back for a game in Denver on Thursday. Two teams really needing this one at this point, especially the Colts at 1-2-1. One, one. Broncos coming in at 2-2. Two and two. Jamie Eisenberg is here. Jamie, I mean, this is a guy who went number one in, in most leagues this year. What are you doing if you have Jonathan Taylor right now? Well, I think you, you hopefully have Naeem Hines on your roster. It's not a very pretty situation because a lot of fantasy managers already on Tuesday night when waivers run, we're trying to replace Javante Williams and Cordero Patterson, two star running backs who have been out. So if your waivers run on Wednesday, the thing that you want to look for is Tyler Algier for the Falcons, I think is going to be the best of the guys who are normally available. Uh, Mike Boone has an opportunity in Denver to step up and be the second guy there behind Melvin Gordon. And obviously, if people have gotten frustrated with Naeem Hines, you look to see if he's available. Now, the Colts have a couple things at play here. If they're going to give Hines the opportunity to be the lead guy, that's what we saw in their first preseason game, Chris. When they rested Jonathan Taylor against Buffalo, they let Hines operate as the normal traditional running back. We know he's usually more of a scat back and air back, as our buddy Pete Prisco likes to say. Uh, so they give him that opportunity. But Deion Jackson, and what is an interesting storyline that we'll be developing tomorrow night, Philip Lindsay's on their practice squad. Lindsay used to play for the Broncos. He's a Denver native. He never left Denver when he went to college to the pros initially uh, when he was an undrafted free agent out of Denver. So uh, he could be the lead running back. Again, I think Hines will lead the team in touches. He'd be my favorite Colts replacement option, uh, somebody that uses a flex. But really, the Colts have struggled to run the ball with the best running back, arguably, in football. It's hard to say that any of these replacement options are going to be good. Yeah, what is going on with Jonathan Taylor this year? Certainly, we'd, we'd love to see him on the field, but so far, he has not lived up to his number one status. Uh, no, by far. And one of the uh, biggest assets for Jonathan Taylor was his offensive line, and it's just been absolutely brutal so far. So with Ryan struggling to take over the starting quarterback job, with the offensive line really letting everybody down, and the lack of real weapons, Michael Pittman really can't do things by himself. So it's not a pretty situation right now for the replacements because if Jonathan Taylor's not getting the job done, these guys are probably going to suck. The thing that makes Hines a little bit more attractive is his role in the passing game. He'll catch the ball in the backfield, you know, try to get the ball out quick out of Matt Ryan's hand. So I think, again, he's a flex in PPR, but certainly not a must-start option given that the Broncos' run defense has been fantastic this season. And with the Colts not having maybe the best running back in all of football in this game, you would think maybe the game plan changes a little bit as well. How might that affect things with the, the pass catchers for the Colts and Matt Ryan? I think you just look at the options here, it's just not pretty. You know, so Michael Pittman's been a star. You know, he's had uh, one huge game, one good game, and then he missed a game due to uh, a, a thigh injury. So he's got to get going. He'll be the guy that they'll lean on probably the most in the passing game, but he's probably going to see a lot of Patrick Sertan on the other side, who's been a very good lockdown corner so far. So he's a start no matter what. Alec Pierce has had a couple of good games now. The rookie out of Cincinnati, maybe he starts to pick up some things a little bit more. Their tight ends have been playing well the last two weeks. Two weeks ago was Delaney Woods catching two touchdowns. Last week was Molly Cox uh, catching six passes. So they'll use those guys more in the passing game, but you're not starting those guys yet until you see one guy sort of separate from the other. And Matt Ryan at this point is hands off. This Broncos passing attack, a uh, pass defense, excuse me, has locked down every opposing quarterback that they faced. They held Derek Carr to 11 fantasy points last week in that matchup against the Raiders. Feels like it could be another 11-10 final in a Broncos game. Like I, I wouldn't be surprised. I think the Broncos' offense might have turned the corner a little bit. I think so. I mean, Russell Wilson's running a little bit more. Using the legs, like you said, 46 yards rushing the last two weeks. So he's hopefully going to build off that. But this Colts defense, we'll see if they show up. No Shaq Leonard as well on the other side. So the Colts are really beat up. All right, that's Jamie Eisenberg here. No Jonathan Taylor on the short week for the Indianapolis Colts with an ankle injury that he suffered on Sunday. Jamie can be heard on the Fantasy Football Today podcast. You can also watch it live here on HQ weekdays at noon Eastern. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.